Welcome back. So I found something in the heavens that I thought was a bit of a warning and enough to make a video to show you today. I was actually looking for the seventh trumpet and the seven vials or bowls of wrath, but I stumbled upon this comment and it was in a peculiar area. It was in the bull or the beast. So I clicked on this comment and backed it up a little bit, went forward a little bit, and sure enough, the apex of this comment, that means the brightest that it gets, actually is when it's going through this bull or the beast in the heavens. I thought that was rather weird because this comment, the world and mainstream media has also dubbed it as the devil comment because when they zoomed in on this comment, it had two horns to make it look like the devil. So they called it that. I paid no mind to it when I, when they first brought it out months ago. But when I seen where it was last night, I checked it out and I thought, maybe I better investigate this. So ran it through and yep, it was the brightest going through the beast of the bull. I also found something else very peculiar was the magnitude and the date seemed to match in the numbers. So I thought, okay, I'm going to click on it. And I backed it up to follow it to its source. And then when I ran it back all the way down to the beast again, I kid you not, on the way down, this comment literally draws out the six and the six and another six before it goes back into the beast. And there's one other thing it does. It, before it goes into the beast, it does one other thing that is rather shocking. And I took it as a warning because of when it happens and how it happens, it, it just... There's no other way except once when I show it to you, you too will probably take this as a warning. And I want to go in and show it to you now. So I stumbled across this Pons Brook comment while I was looking for something else. And it caught my eye and I thought I would take a look at it. But what I was looking for was Revelation chapter 15, verse 1, where John writes, And I saw another sign in heaven great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. So that was, is what I was here looking for in the heavens. And while I was looking for it, this Pons Brook popped up, and I thought, oh, well, I'm going to click on it and just have a look at it. And I know this is the one that the mainstream media has nicknamed the devil comment. So I thought I'm going to click on it just to see what's up with it. So I followed it to here, and it's at the foot of the beast in the heavens. And I found something rather interesting because when I followed it down, it was at a lower magnitude, and it peaks in magnitude right here uh, at a 4.42. It peaks in magnitude, so I'm going to bring the date up. So if you go back a few days, and the 18th of April, it's at a 4.43. Go forward to the 19th, it's 4.42. Uh, the 20th, 4.42. Twenty first, four point four two. Twenty second, four point four two. Twenty third, it starts to go dimmer again. So it peaks between the nineteenth to the twenty second of April. <clears throat> so I'm going to back up one day, the last day of its peak, before it starts to die down again, falls on April twenty second. So. When I was here looking at this, I seen something really amazing because it's a the magnitude is 4.42. I followed it here, 4.42. It's the highest. I look at the date. You have a 2, 2, 4, and a 4, 2, 2. You can read it forwards and backwards. If you take the zeros out, it's 2, 2, 4, 4, 2, 2. I thought that's weird when the magnitude is 4. Point four two. So fours and twos, and I thought, wow, this is, is this the 40 and two months that Revelation 13, 5 talks about? 
So I thought, well, I don't know. I'll look it up. So I'm going to go back in time. That's what I'm going to do now. And just follow this back to, let's get it centered here, to this origin to see um, where it came from. Because I, I wanted to see like if it came from, uh, we call it a devil comet. So I want to see if it came from like a serpent or a dragon or something like that. And yeah, it's, we've got Draco here, which is interesting, right? So I'm going to keep going back in time. And it's spiraling around a little bit, big spirals. And as we go back, it gets tighter spirals to the point where it just kind of hovers around in a location just above Ophetius's head and not really doing anything for a long time because it's a 71 year uh, periodical comet. So what I noticed was right from, I'm going to call it the third seal. So we have December 14th, 2020. And, and I'll actually, this is, this is the point here. I'm going to go back in time just to show you that I want to show you the pattern because it doesn't really do much if I keep going back in time here. So I'm, going to, I'm going back in time right from that point, from the third seal backwards. It's just, it really moving really slowly and just kind of going around in circles. Not really going anywhere which is strange, right? But it's not strange because if it's a periodical comet, it's, it, won't, it won't notice it. And if you look at the magnitude, you couldn't see it. You'd need an extremely powerful telescope to see that if indeed you could zoom in far enough to see that because I, my telescope, I wouldn't be able to pick that up no matter how hard I tried, even if I took it to the top of a mountain <laughs> on a clear night. I'm not going to see that because my telescope's not that powerful. Uh, but anyway, so we're gonna go forward, we'll go back to uh, the third third seal here, 12, 14. And I just wanna show you that this is where I believe it starts to migrate uh, north. I, I call it north it's, I, because when I'm looking at the, have my feet on the ground, I look at Ophetius, uh, it's kinda like going, up, which to me is kind of like north and down south. So that's why I call it north. So I'm going to go forward and we'll follow this comet path. I just, right here, it's, I've right, I found right there, it starts to go more north than it was before. And I thought, ah, it's on, it's on the move. And circles back a little bit. And it goes forward, and it really, the way it's going way more north than it was. And if you notice that the magnitude is actually slowly getting brighter now. So I kept following it and do another loop de loop circle further north still, and magnitude is getting brighter. So let's continue the path. And uh, so this one, now it's really migrating north, like really far, like way out of this area. And I, and this is like, wow, this is, to me, this is really neat. And the magnitude is getting brighter. So follow it again. And it goes back through Draco one more time in a big loop. And then it sweeps right out here. And the magnitude now, it's at 10 and it's getting brighter. I'd, I'd be able to see this in my telescope now. Um, but this date hasn't, it's not here yet, this date. And then this goes straight on through right down to the beast, right? So I took the time to plot out the path. And the path was kind of crazy because this comet literally drew the six 
666 in the heavens, three of them, from that third seal. And then after that, it's going it's going fast now, like every day, like it's going it goes really fast. Like I'm gonna go back it up a bit. Like from from this point here, it goes pretty quickly, and it's just going like a straight line now, straight down. And check this out. This was really something. Right through like the neck of the lamb or the neck of the ram. Right through here. And if you zoom in, the key star is Hamel. The, the main star of this constellation of the ram, the lamb, is Hamel. And, I, and I'm going to show you what that word means in a bit. But continue this down. Oh, and by the way, this date that this comet passes through, like almost making a cutting motion, like up through the neck of the, the lamb, the ram, right here, this is Easter. This is Easter. So, yeah, it's hard. I can't make this up. We have this devil comet coming down, making three sixes, coming down straight through and making this like cutting motion through the neck of the ram on Easter. And then it continues on and gets brighter and brighter until we're into from the 19th. It's at the brightest peak in the beast for three days. And the last day of its peak brightness is on the 224422 day. And the magnitude is 442. I, it just can't make this stuff up so i want to show you that and we will go back and talk about it wow where to start talking about this one well let's start talking about where it left off uh it left off the magnitude of 4.42 in april 22nd 2024 twos and fours and no matter which way you read the date forwards and backwards uh it's twos and fours so it made me to think of Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. I'm going to, I got that here. I'm going to read it to verse 7 because when I looked at this, this kind of paints the picture. The devil coming down with in great wrath, going through the neck of the ram on Easter, through the main star, Hamel, of that ram. I'm going to read this and... Um, because I think it's a perfect fit. It just, yeah, here we go. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So, yeah, that was Revelation chapter 13, verses 5 to 7. So, yeah, I, I followed it back to the, to the source, that comment back to the source. I wanted to track it all the way down. And I'm going to put the, some pictures up here now of the the path it took and i'll show you the path right now and as you can see the red line shows you the path from where it where it lingered for a very long time it's a 71 year periodical comet uh it's called ponds brooks uh in night in 1812 uh ponds discovered it and then 71 years later it was discovered again by brooks which made it to be the periodical comet because it comes back, right? So hence the name, the two people that discovered it, uh, Pons Brooks. And so that red line is the path it took on the way down. And now I'll show you a highlight the first six it makes there. And then I'll highlight the second six it makes there. And the highlight the last six. The last six could really be all the way, all the way down to the beast, but I just highlighted a little portion of it. 
But uh, yeah, there it is there. The six and the six and the six can't make it up. This The world called it, the mainstream media calls it the devil comet. And I kind of I kind of agree with them for once. I don't normally agree with and like mainstream media at all. I don't want to be led by it at all. But uh, yeah, there it is there and going through the Ram. So I want to I want to look up Hamill, the, the main star in the Ram with you. We'll look it up with you and then we'll come back and talk about that. So I type in Hamill and comes up here. Lamb, kind soul. You look down here, it says Hamel is Arabic for head of the ram. So that's all I just wanted to show you was that quickly, and we'll go back and talk about it. So yeah, Hamel being the kind soul, also being the head of the the lamb, the ram. And yeah, we've seen that happen with that uh, comment going right down quickly across the, the neck of the ram and it hits hamel on easter day march 31st can't make that up it just happens just happens to be then to me it's just it's too perfect it's too perfect the story that it matches revelation 13 um five to seven it just matches up too well and i just take this as a warning yeah definitely um on Easter, unreal. So another indicator to that 42 was the brightness of this comet on April 22nd and the 20th and the, the, the 21st and the 19th there. That area, if you go forward in time to the closest this comet is to Earth, which isn't the same day as the the brightest, right? The brightest is April 22nd, 21st, 20th, and 19th. Well, the closest to Earth it brings us to June 2nd. And the amount of time there, 42 days. Another indicator to the 42. And June 2nd brings us to four days, another four, four days before the fifth thunder, which was... June 6th, we've got the 6 of 6, you got six luminaries on that day, making this the fifth thunder. The huge convergence here, right, about talking about, and this is in the beast, in the bull, on that fifth thunder. And one more thing I want to point out with this fours and the twos was when I'm looking at the, the fours and, and the twos, when you got... When you got the April 22 and 2024 for the year, you add those twos together. I know this might be a bit of a stretch, but it bear with me. Add those twos together, you get an eight. And if you look at the four eight and the eight four, it's that chiastic thing we talked about earlier that was in Revelation 12, the chiastic order. And, and, and these are the dates of the third thunder, the eclipse on April 8th, which is 4-8, which is the third thunder, right? And then you have the 8-4, which is the seventh thunder, the 8-4. So you got the seven. If you skip the four, you're on to the five thunder, fifth thunder. And if you go backwards, you skip the, skip the six from the seventh thunder, you're at the fifth thunder. So it points... To this moment of time in the chi chiastic dating, which Revelation 12 is written in chiastic, the first paragraph, last one, matches the second and the second last. Then you have like the meat in that meat sandwich, the way it's written, right? And that it's all about what we just shown here with the comet. It's all there. The warning is there. I really don't know what else I can add to this today. I think that's probably enough. I'm going to do a couple of shout outs here because Stan, I sent Stan the, a screenshot of the comet in the ram, the bull with the 42.2, the 4.42 uh, magnitude on the April 22nd date. And I said, what do you make of this? And uh, he sent me back the origins of, you know, Pondsbrook Comet 
and some dates between some way markers in in history and some numbers uh there was so much he sent me i was overwhelmed that i thought okay has enough encouragement i'm gonna go and take a deeper dive so i did i went back in clicked the comment went back to find the origin of it and then i found it all that <laughs> so i sent that all to him and uh he's like yeah get that get that out there so i agreed with him and uh and I wouldn't have found this too if it wasn't for chatting with a couple in Australia and you know who you are. So thank you. You asked a few questions. Uh and I looked them up. And as as I was looking up the answers, stumbled across this comment. And yeah, it's it's really amazing how God works. Uh glory to God in all this because I see his hand at work uh giving this warning. Um to this, to this, where we're at the, uh, feels like we're at the threshold of this, you know, and we got this AI thing going on. I think it's all connected because I want to connect it here right now with, with what I'm about to say next was this Ponsbrook comet was discovered in 1812. And if you take the 71 year, um, comet, it's a periodical comet. There's a funny thing that Israel was created in 1948 add 71 to that you get 2019 that was the year that the first seal happened right december 26 2019 the first seal was there so that's interesting with the 71 but if you add the 71 uh to the next time it came to earth after 1812 you get 1883 the invention of electricity okay and the first thing they used it when I looked this up, was Christmas tree lights. They lit up the Christmas tree, I guess, so that you didn't have to put candles on there. It wouldn't be fires. So he put electric lights on the Christmas tree. In 1883, uh, was one of the first uses of electricity. And let's go forward another 71 years. You bring us to um, 1954, and you have the creation of the first computer without using vacuum tubes and also the creation of ibm when they sold their first computers so you got electricity and then and then when it comes comet comes back 71 years you have computers and now you have this time period where the rise of ai and during the fifth um trumpet the bottomless pit my interpretation of this bottomless pit during this was there's a lot of news about ai during this time and a one of the new pieces of news was ai being able to replicate itself without any human intervention and i just thought man that sure sounds like a bottomless pit like a never-ending bottomless pit that you cannot end this like you open this up you can't close it you've opened up into something that you shouldn't have never done and it's it's out and i don't think you're ever going to bottle this back up put it away you know as it's going to duplicate faster than you can ever squash them right it, my mental image was like playing that whack-a-mole game and then you have like a whole bunch of other whack-a-mole games and a whole bunch of other it's like oh this is impossible <laughs> that was that was my visual i was like oh this is this is crazy this is yeah it's a nightmare scenario and because that's that's what it made me paint in my mind it's like you cannot close this up once you've opened this bottomless pit and uh, this ai can like going forward not being able to distinguish reality um from the fake to a point where it can fool anybody and, it, and it's getting better every second and i literally every second of the day doesn't sleep it's self-taught self-learning and it's just getting smarter every day and i think as we go forward um yeah just we'll keep talking as long as we can to each other and encourage each other but i do think that time is short it definitely is i want to make this video put this out there and i thank you guys for helping me very much thank you for being able to share it with you pray for more harvesters we need to do the most we can do with the time we have left I love you very much. God bless you. Until the next video.